The film begins with a man who has done something very bad to a group of people. Then it goes back in time to when this man was younger and still in high school. His name is Hun Tao. He has just moved to a new place and is searching for a house to live in. Tao moved there because it's where his mother grew up. While Tao is exploring the area, he meets a man named Kung Inha, who is the owner of one of the houses. It was known that Inhat is the stepson of a wealthy family called the Kungs. However, Inhat isn't treated well by his family. They see him as a disappointment and ignore him. So, even though he has money, he feels very alone. At that time, Tao sees Inha by himself while everyone else is enjoying themselves at a party. The next day, Tao was out looking for a job when he spotted Inha stealing food. Later, he saw Inha picking fruit from someone's garden but he didn't really pay it much mind. There, Inhan noticed Teo's reaction and approached him. He asked if Teo thought it was fun to steal. It turns out, because Inhan's family is wealthy, people in the neighborhood ignore it when he steals. Shortly after, Teo told Inhan that he probably did it to get attention and suggested he steal bigger things if he wanted people to notice him. Inhan pondered over Teo's words because he seemed different from everyone else. Then, they found out they were in the same class. The teacher praised Tao for being one of the smartest students in Korea, which made Inha dislike him even more. During lunch, Inha bothered Tao, leading to a fight. As a result, the teacher made them write apology letters, and Inha was sent out of the classroom. Outside, Tao received a frightening phone call and hurried off. It turns out he met his mother, warning her to leave immediately because someone wanted to harm her. This person is Tao's stepfather, who used to mistreat them and is now in jail. After school, Tao goes to a boxing gym where he finds in a training. He asks if they teach ways to fight to kill, and Inha offers to train him if he can beat him in a fight. They spar, and Inha wins easily. Feeling defeated, Tao recalls the painful memories of their abusive stepfather and lashes out, hitting Inha. Seeing Tao in distress, Inhe takes him home and calls him a friend, which surprises Tao as he's never had a friend before. At school, rumors spread that Tao's father is in prison for killing his mother. Inha scolds his friends for spreading such hurtful gossip, remembering how they had treated him poorly in the past. He approaches Tao and asks to be friends, but Tao, feeling guarded, rejects him. Feeling lonely, Tao is visited by Inhe. Inha tries to connect with Tao, who gets straight to the point. Knowing Inha is from a wealthy family, Tao proposes they become friends for mutual benefit. He wants to use Inha to achieve his goals, and Inha agrees as long as Tao helps him get into Hun Kuk University. Upon hearing that, Tao, confident in his intelligence, agrees to the plan. Now we jump to 2013. Tao and Inha have made it into Hun Kuk University. Tao also works as a math teacher and takes up odd jobs at a factory. He lives next door to a girl named Na Haewon. After a while, Tao and Inha have become close friends and Inha throws a big birthday party for Tao. Despite their friendship, they're still focused on their mission to get Inha into his family's company. On campus, Tao is known as Professor Che Dongwook. One day, a professor takes interest in Tao's proposal and wants to buy it. Little do they know, this report is part of Tao, and Inha's plan to infiltrate Inha's father's company. Hearing that, Tao agrees to the offer, only to find out that the professor is working with Kung Sungju, the second child of the Kang family, to execute their plan. Meanwhile, Tao bumps into Haewon at the library. She introduces herself, but Tao acts aloof, despite being neighbors and in the same department. However, he starts to show some interest when they have coffee together. At that time, Inha notices Tao's attention to Haewon and teases him about it. However, Tao denies being interested, but it seems like Inha might actually be the one interested in Haewon. In the evening, following Inha's advice, Tao takes on a job as a math teacher for his younger half-sister, Kung Heeju. He impresses Heeju with his cool and confident demeanor, but she teases him playfully while he teaches. Tao remains unfazed by her antics. After his teaching session, Inha waits for Tao outside. Curious about his younger sister, Inha asks if Tao thinks he misses his family. 
Despite being half-siblings, Inha and Heju share a close bond. As they part ways, Inha, intrigued by Hei Won, asks Teo to gather information about her, even though they're neighbors and Teo knows her. Back at home, Teo witnesses Hei Won's mother angrily demanding money from her. Though he initially tries to ignore it, Teo empathizes with Hei Won's situation and offers her a drink to console her. At one point, Hei Won wonders why Teo isn't curious about what happened earlier. Tae, O explains that it's just how he lives his life. Meanwhile, in his father, Kum Jong Mo, is meeting with his trusted lawyer. Turns out, in his stepmother, Mrs. Jung, doesn't like Inha at all. She even asks Inha to sign a paper giving up his rights to inherit anything from the family. Inha agrees and signs it as part of their plan. Soon after, the tells Tae O about it, and they decide to celebrate by drinking. But when Inha goes to buy drinks, he runs into Hei Won and invites her to join them. Tae O is surprised by this. At that time, Inha wastes no time and asks Hei Won out on a date, but she turns him down right away. Even though Tao tries not to care, he secretly watches Hei Won closely. Later, when Inha gets drunk, Tao and Hei Won end up going home together. However, instead of going straight home, Hei Won suggests they drink more and takes Tao to her old house. There she realizes that Tao is only friends with Inha because he needs him to achieve his goals. Tae O then asks Hei Won what her intentions are. Meanwhile, Inha shows up at Tao's house and wonders why Tao didn't mention that Hei Won is his neighbor. Back to Tao, he realizes that Hei Won shares the same goal as him. There, she asks for his help, but Tao firmly refuses. However, he promises not to stand in her way. Hei Won is confident that even though Tao doesn't want help, he'll still fight for her. When he gets home, Inha is waiting outside because he wants to spend the night. At the Kang family's house, Heju suggests inviting Inha to dinner, but his mother and older siblings don't want it. After some persuasion, his father agrees. Inha is overjoyed when he's called to join them. However, Mrs. Jung is furious and shows Inha the renunciation letter again. There, Tao advises Inha to be cautious about his father's sudden kindness. He tells Inha to act innocent and uninterested in money so his father won't suspect him. Indeed, Inha's father, despite knowing about Mrs. Jung's plans, keeps the renunciation letter just in case. He plans to buy Milton's company to expand Kung O even further and entrusts his lawyer with the task. At campus, Dong Wook was chosen by Kung Sungju to lead their new company, which was started based on Tao's idea. Meanwhile, Inha gets a call from Heju. He learns that he's invited to eat with her because she asked him, not because his dad wanted him to. Heju also hints that she likes Tao by drawing his face. During their meal, they realize that their waiter is Hei Won, who knows Tao. This makes Heju uncomfortable. In Ha apologizes to Hei Won and offers to take her home, but she says she's busy and doesn't trust easily. In Han is determined to gain her trust. When Tao came home from work, he happened to be on the same bus as Hei Won. At that time, she tried to chat with him, but Tao was distant and suggested she rest instead. The next day, Inha came over for dinner, but his older brother, Kum Inju, insulted him right away. Hearing that, Heju got upset and defended Inha by confronting Inju. This caused a problem, and Mrs. Joan reminded Inha that his presence was causing trouble. She also reminded him of his position in the family. Following Tao's advice to act innocent, Inha left. As he was leaving, Tao noticed Inha's sadness and approached him. Tao invited Inha to join their project to restore his reputation because their idea was starting to take off. During dinner, Heju got upset with her family for acting like nothing happened after kicking out Inha. She thought they were acting crazy. Her dad scolded her brother for throwing Inha out without permission, calling it disrespectful. Heju got slapped by her mom for being disrespectful too. Her mom seemed cold and uncaring. Then her mom found out Inha suggested Tae O become Heju's teacher and told Mr. Moon to fire Tao. She was annoyed Heju ran away and called Tao, who met her. Heju was grateful Tae. O came but accidentally, Hei Won showed up too. Soon after, 
Hiju invited Heiwan to work with Teo, and asked her to be friends with Inha. Not long after, Inha arrived, and Hiju got annoyed because Teo said she wouldn't want to go with Inha without him. But Heiwan wanted to come too since she's Teo's neighbor, which surprised Hiju. Soon after, Teo found out his contract with Hiju was terminated. Then he wanted to drink and was approached by Heiwan, who asked where they'd be in 10 years. Teo said she'd be wherever she wanted. Shortly after, Teo told Heiwan not to use him to talk to Inha, because she should do it herself. Meanwhile, at home, Hiju was upset because her mom fired Teo. She skipped school and met him on campus. She was bothered because Teo was distant, but she confessed she liked him. At that time, Heiwan saw them, but Teo said they were only teacher and student, employer and worker. He warned Hiju not to test his patience. Soon after, Hiju thanked Teo, but cried in the car. Heiwan, who saw it, told Teo he was too harsh. However, Teo brushed it off, saying it wasn't her concern. At that time, Inha saw this and wondered about Heiwan's intentions. Meanwhile, at a gambling den, Heiwan's mom works there and steals money to play. Because of this, a thug demands 50 million won from Heiwan. She refuses and denies knowing her mom. But then the thug slaps her and she fights back. Seeing that, Teo stops them and they leave. There, Teo suggests Hei Wan move for a while, but she refuses, saying she's been through worse and isn't at fault. Meanwhile, Inha learns Hei Wan's in trouble, but she doesn't answer. He and Tei a look for her. Despite trying not to care, Teo worries and returns. Soon after, Inha finds Hei Wan and hugs her, surprising Teo. On the way home, Teo meets Hei Wan who wants to move in with Inha. Upon hearing that, Teo disagrees, but Heiwan says they have no relationship since he's cold and uncaring. She's sure he doesn't regret it, and Teo confirms it. Soon after, Heiwan left Teo, but later she returned. Teo was torn between opening the door for her or answering Inha's call. Eventually, he chose to answer Inha's call, finding out that Heiwan had left. Five years later, the company formed from Teo's idea celebrated its fifth anniversary. Inha worked there and greeted the Kang family, but his father seemed indifferent. During the celebration, Dong Wook introduced Teo as the head of global leadership coaching. Kung Jong Mo was happy to see Teo. Soon after, Teo and Inha mentioned their plans were just starting. After the introductions, Chairman Kang asked everyone to leave except him and Teo. Chairman Kang questioned the speech Teo made, feeling it was designed to make Teo look good and imply he wasn't fit to lead Kungno's company. He fired Teo, but Teo argued Chairman Kang truly needed his skills. Shortly after, Chairman Kang shared a secret with Teo about his father's case, making Teo angry, but he tried to stay calm. At that time, Chairman Kang also knew all of Teo's plans because Dong Wook always reported them. He said if Teo wanted to work with him, he had to learn to hide his true self and keep his ideas secret, warning him that Chairman Kang held Teo's secret. Upon hearing that, Teo understood and remembered Chairman Kang's message. Then Chairman Kang gave a motivational speech urging Kung O employees to give their all for the company. Despite being mad at Teo, Chairman Kang still used parts of Teo's speech. Afterwards, Teo told in Ha Sung Ju's next plans. Once the Kangno Cooperative Company advances, Dong Wook won't be needed anymore and Sung Ju will take his place to get closer to Kangno's power, since the Cooperative Company controls all Kangno subsidiaries. After a while, Chairman Kang still trusting Teo's abilities, despite suspecting hidden motives. At that time, he appoints Teo as his secretary, believing the game has just started. Five years later, Chairman Kang faints while swimming but turns out to be fine. He wonders why his family seems distant, even though he's okay. In the elevator, the family argues because they think Tae O was getting too close to their father, acting like his son. Mrs. Jung tries to calm them down. However, In Ju dislikes Mrs. Jung because she's her stepmother, and Mrs. Jung's biological children are Sung Ju and He Ju. Meanwhile, in Chairman Kang's room, they plan for Kim Sung Soo, 
the chairman of the House of the Representative candidate they've won, to become president and help realize Chairman King's dream project, the Royal Road. This project aims to build a huge city by the coast, even bigger than Kungno City and comparable to other countries. Soon after, Chairman Kang asks Tao if the dream sounds ridiculous, but Tao believes it's possible with Kungno's resources, especially since Chairman Kang has already bought the area needed for the project. They just need to make it happen. Meanwhile, Inhat is leading a meeting about their technology project. However, the professor who created the tool struggles to explain it clearly, making Inhei upset because he's worked hard on this project. The professors seem inexperienced. Soon after, he gets a message from Teo and quickly apologizes for getting emotional. Elsewhere, Heiwan is seen working as a reporter. Sung Ju meets with Chairman Zhou, a member of the House of Representatives, hinting at a plan they have. Unbeknownst to them, they're being watched by a hacker who sends CCTV footage to Teo. It turns out the hacker is part of Teo's plan. According to him, Chairman Zhou will become party chairman in five days, injuring Chairman Kang because it will disrupt the Royal Road project. They wonder what Chairman Kang will do if he finds out about Sung Ju's actions. The next day, Chairman Zhou was appointed chairman of the Hunmi party, and the news spread everywhere. Chairman Kang was furious because this went against his plan to make Kim Sung Su president. The news made Chairman Kang feel sick. That evening, Tao and Heiwan met at their usual spot. There, Heiwan asked about Chairman Kang, but Tao shifted the conversation to the news about Inhat and Heiwan getting married. He thought that was Heiwan's goal all along, but she denied wanting to get married. But then, Tao reminded her of her duties and asked her to gather evidence about Chairman Zhou within two days. The next day, Heiwan tried to approach a colleague who hadn't liked her. He explained that he disliked her because she hadn't given him opportunities to get to know her, not because of work competition. Soon after, he invited her to Chairman Zhou's conference, but she refused. In another place, Heiju is upset because she's being forced into a marriage with a man named Ko Weichun. She talks to her mother, saying she doesn't want an arranged marriage, especially to someone like Weichun, who acts like a child. But her mother insists because marrying him would help their business grow. However, Heiju doesn't care and threatens to do something drastic if her mother forces her to marry him. Outside, she orders someone to find out where Wee Chun is. She also considers contacting Tao, but decides against it. Meanwhile, at the karaoke place, Heiwan bribes the owner to place a voice recorder where her co-workers gather. She then asks Tao to go to Inha's house. Sung Ju's goal is to promote Chairman Zhou so they can control important government departments and push forward the Royal Road project. This plan will damage Kungno's finances and tarnish its reputation, blaming Chairman Kang. Then they'll separate the cooperative center from Kungno, part of Sung Ju's larger plan to control all of Kungno's companies. But at that time, they were puzzled about how to stop Sung Ju because his plan seemed flawless. Heiwan suggested convincing Chairman Kang to separate from the center, but Tao said they couldn't change Chairman Kang's mind. However, Tao assured them he wouldn't let Chairman Zhou and Sung Ju take over while he was around. He then met with the hacker to gather information. Meanwhile, Mrs. Zhang met with Chairman Kang's doctor to discuss his health, but the doctor avoided the topic. Mrs. Zhang hinted about the doctor's son's drug issue to get information. Tao reported about Save Africa, a group laundering money for Sudanese refugees, and how it's linked to the Zhang Noik Foundation managed by Mrs. Zhang. He also knows who's behind it all. Tao mentioned Sung Ju's connection to the cooperative center could make him the owner of Kungno. Elsewhere, Mrs. Jung and Sung Ju meet with Mr. Chu. Soon after, Sung Ju talks about Kungno's first founder, his grandfather, and how his father strayed from his principles. There, he asks Mr. Chu to help return Kungno to its original values. At the same time, Sung Ju wants to know about Milton Company, which holds Chairman Kang's secrets. However, Mr. Chu, being loyal to Chairman Kang, refuses. But there, Sung Ju taunts him, saying he's just a puppet for Chairman Kang, Bukase Tao has taken his place now. Soon after, Sung Ju suggests creating his own law firm. Meanwhile, Tao continues to analyze his plans. He learns Sung Ju will exploit Mr. Chu, 
Sung Ju sleeps, unaware his phone has been tapped by Tao, allowing him to see everything. Upon hearing all of that, Mr. Chu agreed to Sung Ju's offer, asking him to keep his word. But Sung Ju seemed to laugh, suggesting he wouldn't keep his promise. He pretended to agree with Mr. Chu's request. Then the hacker sent Tae of the messages between Mr. Chu and Sung Ju. The next day, Mr. Chu sent a file exposing all of Chairman Kang's vulnerabilities, proving Milton belongs to Chairman Kang. Unbeknownst to him, the hacker had hacked into his computer and copied the file. In his room, Chairman Kang, aware that Tao knows Milton is his weakness, worries Tao will exploit it against him. However, Tao clarifies that Milton isn't Chairman Kang's weakness, cause it's just a part of it. He shows Chairman Kang the messages between Song Ju and Mr. Chu. Seeing this, Chairman Kang becomes very angry. Somewhere else, Mrs. Chung talks about Chairman Kang's critical health condition. Turns out, he has a heart problem, and the doctor warns that his heart could stop at any moment. She reminds Sung Ju to focus on promoting Chairman Zhou's image. However, Sung Ju doubts Chairman Zhou's intentions, feeling that Chairman Zhou is only looking out for himself. But Mrs. Jung insists they stick to the plan. Soon after, Chairman Kang instructs Tao to call Mr. Q, which frightens Mr. Chu. Meanwhile, Henny Wan, just back home, is surprised when in -ha invites her to the beach, only to find out it's just a video. Inha gets straight to the point, asking Hei Wan to marry him. Despite her earlier refusal to Tao, this time she accepts Inha's proposal. In his room, Chairman Kang tells Milton Law Firm employees to investigate anything that could disrupt the change in central management. To keep things confidential, Tao collects everyone's cell phones. Mr. Chu panics and sneaks away to the bathroom, fearing for his career. Tao approaches him, offering his phone, but Mr. Chu refuses. While working, Mr. Chu becomes more fearful seeing Tao whispering to Chairman Kang. Meanwhile, Mrs. Jung learns from Sung Ju that Chairman Kang plans to assert his control over the central company. Unfazed, Mrs. Jung decides to use her secret weapon to show that Kung O doesn't solely belong to Chairman Kang. Soon after the meeting begins and surprisingly, Chairman Kang praises Sung Ju for his forward thinking, acknowledging his role in creating an advanced cooperative company. Because of this, Chairman Kang asks Sung Ju to take charge of reviving Kung O's securities, whether he likes it or not. The cooperative center will now be under Chairman Kang's control, and Dong Wook, who was rejected by Sung Ju, is appointed as the center director at Tao's suggestion. At that time, Tao wants to capitalize on Dong Wook's resentment towards Sung Ju for betraying him. Meanwhile, Sung Ju is furious about the turn of events much to the delight of Inha and Hei Wan. While having a meal, Mrs. Jung confronts Chairman Kang for his unfair treatment of Sung Ju. But her anger fades when Chairman Kang reveals her involvement with Save Africa and realizes he knows all her schemes. Undeterred, she demands the sender be returned to Sung Ju, or she'll become Chairman Kang's enemy, threatening to expose his wrongdoings with a USB. At that time, Chairman Kang's heart hurt from the threat, but he tries to remain composed and suggests continuing the discussion at home. However, Mrs. Jung is relentless, willing to do whatever it takes to win, even if it tarnishes Kung No's reputation. As she leaves, it's revealed another party is trying to ruin Chairman Kang by reporting financial fraud at Kung O. Now, prosecutors are seizing Kung O's assets, leaving Chairman Kang distraught and unable to take his medicine. Mrs. Jung, witnessing his distress, initially considers helping him but ultimately chooses to let Chairman Kang die. Meanwhile, Tao, in his room, quickly heads to Chairman Kang's room, but there's something odd about Tao's behavior. Instead of rushing to administer medicine, he calmly calls for an ambulance. On the other hand, the prosecutors, who were confiscating evidence, are ordered to halt their investigation, irritating them. At that time, In Ha and Hei Wan are stunned to hear that Chairman Kang is dying. The prosecutor is frustrated that they can't investigate Chairman Kang due to his condition. At the same time, the family is worried about their father's health. Inju blames Mrs. Jung, but she claims Chairman Kang already had heart disease. In that moment, Inju becomes suspicious of Mrs. Jung for hiding Chairman Kang's illness, 
But there, Mrs. Jung pretends to be sick to avoid suspicion. Then Tao arrives and instructs them to leave, stating the doctor said Chairman Kang needs rest. Hiju is surprised by Tao's presence. Outside, Mrs. Jung talked again about Hiju and Wei Chun's marriage, but Hiju still refused. Her mother reminded her that she had to get married quickly because her father was very sick. This would help her older brother, Sungju. Similarly, Inju was upset about Tao's closeness to his father, but his wife suggested that Tao support Inju instead by giving him a bribe. Meanwhile, Mrs. Jung and Sungju were unsure who knew about Milton and Chairman Kang. Mrs. Jung thought it was someone close to Chairman Kang. Then, Sung Ju's mother told him to get ready for an emergency meeting. The next day, Tao was visited by In Ha, who scolded him for not sharing his plans. In Ha thought Tae, Oh, might betray him. However, Tao assured him that he was only acting for In Ha's benefit and urged him not to doubt. Later, Tao was asked to meet In Ju, who offered him a job at his house. However, Tao refused to work for Inju because Chairman Kang was still alive. But just before leaving, Tao hinted that Inju should have offered something more enticing if he really wanted his help. Inju asked what Tao wanted, and he replied, saying he wanted everything Inju had, then walked away. Inju, feeling irritated, immediately called his secretary. When the secretary arrived, Tao noticed he was carrying a stick, which turned out to be for hitting him. After punishing his secretary, Inju ordered him to spy on Tao for the next 24 hours. Alone again, Tao was visited by Hei Wan. She asked what he planned to do now that Chairman Kang was dying and how it could benefit Songju and Mrs. Jung. There, Tao simply said he would wait, which annoyed Hei Wan because she wanted a clear answer. Shortly after, Tao reminded Hei Wan that she couldn't order him around because he only followed in Ha's orders. Hei Wan then asked if she could order him if she belonged to In Ha, which made Tao more certain that Hei Wan's main goal was to marry In Ha. Even though he seemed calm, Tao was still thinking about the news. Then he went to Chairman Kang's room and found out that Chairman Kang was healthy. Chairman Kang immediately asked if he could trust Tao. Tao mentioned that Chairman Kang had weaknesses, but Chairman Kang suspected that Tao had never asked for gifts from him. Tae O also said that now he wanted to ask for a gift. Chairman Kang also believed that it wasn't him who chose Tao, but Tao who chose him. Tae O explained that he made decisions about his future based on his judgment. Then Chairman Kang asked who would benefit from Tao's risky plan. When Tao showed a photo of Mr. Chu and Sungju, Chairman Kang became very angry. However, Tao suggested something to prevent such incidents from happening again. So, the one who told the authorities about Chairman Kang's situation was actually Chairman Kang himself, following advice from Tao. They did this so that Chairman Kang wouldn't be threatened by this issue anymore. They chose Prosecutor Ham Young Jin, a former police officer who isn't easily influenced by bribery. Tao planned for Chairman Kang to stay quiet and act like he didn't know anything. Talking about who benefits from this plan, Tao explained that neither he nor Chairman Kang benefits, but it's Project Royal Road. When Chairman Kang heard this, he laughed, surprised by Tao's answer. But he still asked what gift Tao wanted. Tao asked for help from Chairman Kang during crisis. Then Chairman Kang asked what's next. Tao said, come in ha. He wanted to make in ha a scapegoat because Chairman Kang needed a successor from his family, but couldn't trust his two sons. He could use in Ha and discard him if necessary. Upon hearing that, Chairman Kang agreed and asked Tao to get everything ready. He also warned Tao to ensure that in Ha doesn't become power hungry. Outside, Tao got a message from Hei Wan that in Ha had vanished, but Tao spotted in Ha watching beach videos, so he knew where in Ha had gone. At that time, Hei Wan wanted to come along but Tao preferred to go alone. He found in Ha at the beach, where memories of a dark incident involving his mother flooded back. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Inju learned that Mrs. Jung and Sungju were planning to make Sungju the leader in an emergency meeting. This made Inju angry, and he demanded to be chosen instead. But Sungju said it wasn't possible because Inju had a case with the authorities. 
There Mrs. Jung warned in Ju to show respect, but he threatened her, saying she had to choose between being a mother or a stepmother if she wanted to avoid conflict. In that moment, Mrs. Jung considered getting rid of in Ju, but Sung Ju advised against it, calling him a fool. The next day, Tao eventually found in Ha and told him about Chairman Kang's good health. Upon knowing that, In Ha immediately lashed out at Tao for not informing him sooner, feeling hurt because he thought Tao didn't trust him. But Tao explained he was trying to avoid failure and wanted the best for In Ha. The following day, Hiju told Tao that she wanted to marry him, but Tao surprisingly agreed. He questioned if he had to endure being treated poorly and fantasize about being Hiju's husband. He urged her to stop thinking like a fairy tale princess. Hiju was upset, asking if she couldn't dream in love, and vowed to make her fairy tales real. Tao warned her not to drag him into her fairy tale, but Hiju insisted she could do it. With a lot on his mind, Tao returned to listening to his mother's favorite song. The next day, an urgent meeting took place. Mrs. Jung led the meeting instead of Chairman Kang and appointed Songju as the head of the Kungo group. Meanwhile, a hacker targeted Kungo's stock securities account, which was managed by Sungju. The hacker attacked the site and caused significant damage to Kung O's securities company. On the other hand, Sung Ju and his mother, who were initially celebrating their success, were shocked to hear about the website breakdown and the losses it caused. Sung Ju was furious and confused about how to fix everything, especially with the prosecutors coming after them. At the same time, Tao continued to update Chairman Kang about the situation while Inju reveled in Sungju's troubles. In the evening, Inha met with Chairman Kang. It turned out that the chaos at Kung O Securities was orchestrated by Inha as a gift to his father. At that time, Chairman Kang acknowledged that every action has consequences and asked what Inha wanted. Inha simply wished for his father to publicly acknowledge him as his third son, Kung Inha, the son of Kung Zhongmo. In that moment, Chairman Kang was pleased because in -ha showed respect for the Kang family name. However, in -ha explained that he knew being a Kang was just a title, but he desired genuine recognition. He wanted his father to publicly affirm him as Kung Zhongmo's son, and he insisted that Chairman Kang should be the one to do it. Chairman Kang then handed in -ha an agreement to read and sign if he agreed. in -ha also asked what would happen if he refused. Chairman Kang replied that they would never see each other again. In has signed the agreement. Meanwhile, Sung Ju continued to be pursued by journalists. Mrs. Jung was shocked by Chairman Kang's unexpected visit and was furious at being deceived by him. Chairman Kang asserted that no one could deceive him. Sung Ju, arriving just then, was confused by his mother's actions. At home, Chairman Kang instructs Mr. Moon to prepare dinner. After a long wait, Inha finally becomes part of the Kang family. Mrs. Jung, unhappy about it, leaves promptly. Hiju congratulates Inha. The following day, Chairman Kang continues to feign illness in public, and Inha is the one pushing his wheelchair. When Inha addresses Chairman Kang as father for the first time, everyone is stunned. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is just because you pretend to be sick, doesn't mean your kid won't roll you out into the spotlight. Always be ready for unexpected family bonding, even if it means getting pushed around a bit. Yeah.